this might be a good place to, uh, you already mentioned it, but what is contrastive learning and what are energy-based models? Contrastive learning is sort of the a paradigm of learning where the idea is that you are learning this embedding space or so you're learning this sort of vector space of all your concepts. And the way you learn that is basically by contrasting. So the idea is that you have a sample, you have another sample that's related to it. So that's called the positive. And you have another sample that's not related to it. So that's negative. So for example, let's just take an NLP or what, in a simple example in uh, computer vision. So you have an image of a cat, you have an image of a dog. And for whatever application that you're doing, say you're trying to figure out what pets are, you're saying that these two images are related. So an image of a cat and dog are related. But now you have another third image of a banana. Uh, because you don't like that word. So thank now you. you basically have <laughs> this banana. Thank you for speaking to the crowd. And so you take both of these images and you take the image from the cat, the image from the dog, you get a feature from both of them. Mm -hmm. And now what you're training the network to do is basically uh, pull both of these features together while pushing them away from the feature of a banana. Mm -hmm. So this is the contrastive part. So you're contrasting against the banana. So there's always this notion of a negative and a positive. Mm -hmm. Now, energy-based models are like, like one way that uh, Jan sort of explains a lot of these methods. So uh, Jan basically, I think a couple of years or more than that, like when I joined Facebook, uh, Jan used to keep mentioning this word energy-based models. And of course I had no idea what he was talking yeah. about. So then one day I caught him in one of the conference rooms and I'm like, can you please tell me what this is? So then like very patiently, he sat down with like a marker and a whiteboard. And his idea basically is that Rather than talking about probability distributions, you can talk about energies of models. So models are trying to minimize certain energies in certain space, or they're trying to maximize a certain kind of uh, energy. And the idea basically is that you can explain a lot of the contrastive models, GANs, for example, which are like generative adversarial networks. Uh, a lot of these modern learning methods or VAEs, which are variational autoencoders, you can really explain them very nicely in terms of an energy function that they're trying to minimize or maximize. And so by putting this common sort of language for all of these models, what looks very different in machine learning that, oh, VAEs are very different from what GANs right. are, are very, very different from what contrastive models are. You actually get a sense of like, oh, these are actually very, very related. Mm -hmm. It's just that the way or the mechanism in which they're uh, sort of maximizing or minimizing this energy function is slightly different. It's revealing the, the, the commonalities between all these approaches right. and putting a sexy word on top of it like energy. And so similarity, so two things that are similar have low energy like the low energies signifying similarity. Right, exactly. So basically the idea is that if you were to imagine like the embedding as a manifold, a 2D manifold, you would get a hill or like a high sort of peak in the energy manifold wherever two things are not related. And basically you would have like a dip where two things are, are related. So you'd get a dip in the manifold. And uh, in the self-supervised context, how do you know two things are related and two things are not related? Right. So this is where all the sort of ingenuity or tricks comes in, right? So for example, like uh, you can take the fill in the blank problem or you can take in the, like, the context problem. And you, what you can say is two words that are in the same context are related. Two words that are in different contexts are not related. For images, basically two crops from the same image are related. And whereas a third image is not related at all. Or for a video, it can be two frames from that video are related because they're likely to contain the same sort of concepts in them. Whereas a third frame from a different video is not related. So it basically is, it's a very general term. Contrastive learning has nothing really to do with self-supervised learning. It actually is very popular in, for, for example, like any kind of metric learning or any kind of embedding learning. So it's also used in supervised learning. It's also... And the thing is, because we are not really using labels to get these positive or negative pairs, uh, it can basically also be used for self-supervised learning.